Good afternoon, Warriors. It's Lisa Wolf, and today is Slow and Steady Sunday. And on Slow and Steady Sunday, um, I come to you. Um, I, I just got confirmation left and right, and this is, I, I don't believe that he wants me to um, make a message um, about this, but it, it, it's time to talk about it. Um, there are things in life that happen, like like COVID, it happened, and it happened across the whole world, just not the United States, but the whole world world experience something some type of hardship from covid and or some type of loss and it's not your fault that this happened and before i say that teaching or the word that he has um shown me that i would that i'm sharing with you has a lot to do with circumstances that we cannot control and but we are responsible for the outcome and the response that we give this um situation like for example um and then there are things that is in our control and it's the choices that we make. That's where I'm heading at more, especially like, cause like with my past, and I know that we all have a past, but during this process, even during this sickness, I was like in the process. And this is why it's slow and steady, slow and steady um, Sunday that you, in like you've, find the opportunity of this journey to it's not placing a blame game on anybody and like I'm using my past as an example yes I could blame like my childhood I could blame um my past relationships I can I, I can play the blame game but for years now, I've stopped that. And I look at the, the um, yes, the bad and good in a situation. And I, and that has helped me in this situation to look for the good in everything. Because God is everywhere. And he's even in situations that we can't control. But he is most definitely in situations we can control and that's why we have free will and it's our choice but there comes a time and place with the situations that we make choices and they don't pan out to be in good judgment or in good character at the time we do have to take ownership of those choices and it's not um from someone else you can blame it on somebody else but the real truth is is that you have to take ownership and take responsibility in your decision making and make a commitment to change and the thing is is that i've had to do that for years now but since I've been, um, when I got ill, the reason why I'm mentioning this is that something out of your control is going to happen in your faith and your character and just your, de your um, decision making is going to surface. So you do have to make peace with your past. You do have to make peace with your past. You can't be like, like I, I thought like just like being saved or whatever. And I forgave those people that have hurt me. But the thing is, I had to go back and take a serious inventory on the part I played in it. Mm -hmm. And I know that's hard and it's gut wrenching. 
but you have to have those release days. You have to have, no, and it's a slow and steady process. You can't blame other people for the choices that you have made. Like for instance, my, my um, past, I had to make peace with um, my past, especially the, um, especially during this time because all that stuff is surfacing and um, Heavenly Papa is doing a deep cleanse in me from the inside out. And the thing is, a lot what has come up in my, um, right now, that I have to take ownership is how, I can't believe I'm even saying this on YouTube, is how I viewed men and how I treated men. And even though some of those men um, did treat me bad, it's because I had to take ownership on myself, you know, and the thing is, is that I'm not saying like you deserve it or anything like that. I know I didn't deserve the treatment that I received, but during this healing process, I had to take ownership on a few situations and the thing is is I had to forgive myself and the thing is is that there are situations that has um the Lord has brought to my attention and I take full ownership of it but I'm and, and I took it to him and I'm releasing it to him. So this is a like I'm releasing some things that I should have a long time ago. And I thought I did. But I truly didn't. And I he gave me um, some some scripture to back it up. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22 again that 2 Corinthians chapter 1 um verse 22 um he did set a seal of ownership on me and he put his spirit in my heart as a deposit and and it's a guarantee what is to come and for for my um to heal from my past relationships and especially with men um i have to do this process because his promise is marriage and and my ordained husband not just for me but for that man and for the kingdom for god's glory and this is how he heals you. He does like uh, intense, <laughs> when I say intense purging and healing process, you got to get that core out. You got to get that core out. And, and then Job chapter 19, verse 4, he says, sometimes you got to do things on your own with the Lord and you have to take that ownership of your doings. And in Romans 14, 12. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. There's going to come a time on Judgment Day that you will have to give God all your accounts. But he already knows. But to face those things and I had to take ownership and I am today and forever more. But I'm not going to condemn myself for these things. And the thing is, I'm releasing them and taking ownership of what I did, the choices I made. And the thing is, that's why my vow is in place. And there's no way that I can be shaken by this vow. And the, the vow is to wait to have sex with my husband. 
in that covenant, in that safety, that security to express my love. Because I don't want a man, because the last man I was with, um, in that way, like about six years ago, he made a statement and I don't want any man to ever feel that way. Especially about me and just how I projected um, how I cared about this person. And the truth is, I, I at the time, I did really care about that uh, th this man. And I still do care about this man. It's just that he was trying to be there for me. But I've been so hurt. This is not an excuse, but this is what I did. I, we are both hurt people. So we were hurting each other even more. He was hurt by someone else and I was hurt by someone else. But we were still content. We were hurting each other. And the thing is, is that I don't, after that experience and what he said, he said, you, you, you treat me like you treat every other man. I don't want my husband feeling that way. So God, so I made this vow to God that I am going to wait. And it has been a journey. I've been um, just like, I've been physically absent, but in my mind and in my heart, not so much until this situation has happened and God has completely purged me. And I know for a fact, because in Galatians chapter six, verse five, it says, for each one should carry their own load. I have carried my own load and I have taken the responsibility to heal from those hurts and not pass it on to somebody else. Cause that's what heal people do for, to help heal other people. I, I, I'm in, I'm, I have made a vow this like a year and a half ago when God has saved me from COVID and I made a vow to say, I'm going to glorify you, Lord, for sure. I'm going to wait because a situation happened where I could have um, gave myself to somebody, to a man that I truly do love and care about. And, and I, I couldn't do it because it wasn't in the covenant that God has designed sex for. For you to become one with that man. Or if you're a man listening to this with that woman. And I cherish, I cherish the union of marriage now. He, I had, I, I cannot hate COVID because of all the blessings and lessons and the maturity and the growth that God has installed in me. And he, I, it's because I took ownership of the things that I did wrong and the choices I made. But I know now I'm absolutely healed and delivered from that addiction. I don't see it as an addiction anymore. I see it as a beautiful union between a man and a woman that are one with love. And I truly, I declare it today. I have declared it before the Lord first during this time being sick that I declare I truly desire to wait for my husband because I want that man to be the man to feel special. Like while she went through 
excuse my language, hell, to be purified and holy and and been rejected and hurt and heartbroken and abandoned because she chose to own up to her discretions and her choices from her past, but to make peace and heal for me. I mean, for the Lord, but for him. Because he is worthy of that. He is worthy of it. And I am worthy of it. Because we are healed by perfect love. So that makes our flaws perfect. You are perfect when it being healed by Jesus. Because the same power that raised, raised him from the dead is in you. Jesus didn't, didn't die and been brutally beaten for nothing and it was not in vain. He took his cup. He took his ownership because it was in God's will. It was in God's will. And today in church, I got confirmation. I got confirmation that this is God's will for my life, for my boys' life, for my husband's life, for his children's life. But it's how bad do you really want this life? I want heaven on earth. I want that, that abundant life that he talks about, that God talks about, and that God has promised me. And I'll do, I'll do anything in his will for that promise. I hope you guys have a blessed day and just, just keep on. Just keep on going. And it is going to be worth it. It's worth it now. It's worth it now. You just have to look at the good of everything. God bless.